What's up? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Today is day 47 of the Movement Control Order. We got quite a show today. Quite a topic to talk about. Let's do it. Everybody, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are fine. We got Brandon in the house. What's good. up? Hello, your intro is very, very long. I know. Yeah, I thought it was never gonna end, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just before we begin, uh, we just want to introduce everybody. My name is Jenny Boy. We have Brandon in the house, and also we have Ernest Ung. Welcome to the show. Back to the show. How have you been, man? I know you've been very busy because like your comics have been basically making its way around the whole wide world. Um, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you guys, if you guys must know, Ernest, uh, of course, is the man behind uh, the COVID nineteen ball, uh, Dragon Ball inspired uh, manga comic that's been going around in Malaysia. And uh, re- quite recently, he actually drew a COVID nineteen manga ball, Dragon Ball inspired kind of a comic uh, that was actually talking about Donald Trump, which was hilarious, by the way. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how was that though? Did you did you get any like Americans messaging you, like especially the Trump supporters, like, hey man, you can't make fun of our president. Uh, wait, wait, before we get that, Gene, yeah. what was that voice? Can you do that again? What, what was that rendition of an American? No, that, that's Trump's voice. That's Donald Trump's voice, right? Donald Trump's voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your fake news. <laughs> so, yeah, did you uh, get Americans coming in? Uh, there are a few Americans that sent me a message. They were saying that uh, it's, uh, they enjoyed it. But but then like I think uh I uploaded it on Twitter and I think uh someone reported the the certain panels certain pages that uh might be a bit more sensitive so they reported so a few pages got taken out wow and uh, it has never came back so I'm like ah you know what whatever so the the, the ones on Twitter are a little um hanging hanky uh, yeah a few few pages missing but the ones on uh, Instagram and Facebook are still alright lah. So, well, I, I, I can tell you why, because uh, Donald Trump himself reported you. <laughs> I think so, lah. It must Donald, have been him, lah. Yeah, not bad, dude. It, 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 means it just proves the fact that either Donald Trump himself or Donald Trump's administration have been reading your comics, and that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, maybe it's his supporters uh, that just didn't like it when I, you know, yeah. I make fun of the situation. But, but it's, it's funny, I mean, like, at the end of the day, uh, whatever you are drawing... Well, don't put Trump aside, but whatever that you're drawing for Malaysia, it's just amazing because like right now, right, my, I have my whole team. Uh, every time you're like, oh, I can't wait for the next episode. I can't wait for the next episode. It's just, a nice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's just a nicer way to just deliver the news of what's happening in our country, which is amazing. <laughs> I, tell you. I tell you, it's really, you know, really fun. You know what I'm actually quite sad about? Like, you know, now we have news that I think it's one of the main things that we're going to be discussing today, you know, uh, that the MCO is relaxed. You know, one of the most saddest thing is, is that because of this relaxation of the MCO, I'm so worried about Ernest's comics. Like, because there's nothing to talk about because MCO, you know, it progresses after one episode after another. Now that it's lifted, right? It's like, are we still going to get any more comics because it is lifted? Of or that's course. it because it's gone? Yeah, still, still have, still have. I'm in yeah. the midst of writing the- Actually. Yeah, I'm nice. pretty sure. It's okay, yeah, I'm, okay. Yeah, still have, still have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with yeah. whatever decision that's gonna be basically announced to the public, it's basically like ongoing content for others. But you know, with that being said, Brandon, I know um just a couple of days ago, our prime minister went and uh, and addressed the nation and talking about um kind of like yeah, would they call it a conditional MCO? And they were, well, okay. So if you're if you if you haven't been keeping up with the news, this Fourth of May, which is tomorrow, um there's going to be some sort of like a conditional MCO where uh, certain sectors of the economy, I would say most of the sectors of the economy is going to be opened back up to public. In other words, uh, MCO is slightly lifted. Can I say slightly lifted or like almost majority lifted? I would say there's just a, a relaxation of the MCO. La. Let's just put it that way. It is a conditional movement control order. So what, what you said was exactly right. It's a conditional MCO. That's what it is right now. Or at least that's what the news portals and the mainstream media are terming this to be like a conditional MCO. So yeah. yeah, so it's been announced on Labor Day. It's so funny, right? It's so ironic that May 1st is supposed to be Labor Day. And that day when you tell people like, okay, you can balik kerja now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. So with that, with that being said, all right, I'm going to read yeah. the latest uh, cases today. 122 new cases as of today. Next question. Do you think we are ready to relax the MCO? Uh, personally, I don't think so. Uh, I understand what the government is trying to do at this moment uh, because of economy purposes and all that. You know, people still need to get back to work and things are getting tough for a lot of uh, businesses. But at the same time, uh, this CMCO, as we call it, the conditional one, it's, it really highly depends on everyone's cooperation. You know, you, you're, you're basically hoping everyone cooperates. But... I don't know. Like, I feel like a large number of people is very hard to control. Yep. And I don't know. Maybe call me a pessimist, but I feel like on the fourth, like some shit's going to happen. Like, like some, some weird gathering is going to happen. People are going to like <laughs> eat everything together. You know? So, so it's hard to talking. say. The people are going to go yeah. out in groups. People are going to start playing yeah. like so sports. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's say it's like you, you feel like you go out, you're going to like, oh, I'm going to maintain social distancing. I'm going to like make sure it's only like a meter ahead of me. Like, you know, I'm not very close to the guy in front of me. When everyone goes out together, the place is so crowded. There's no space to avoid, to, to, to keep that distance anymore. So how is that social distancing at, at its core? So I feel that, I, I mean, I understand what the government's trying to do, but at the same time, it's a little too soon. And uh, it comes in like very surprising. Because he announced it on the, like, on the first, right? And it's happening yep. in three years' time. So it's like, I don't think there's a, any level of preparation that has been had, you know? I mean, like, I still feel we should have gone with the 12. Uh, so I'm just hoping for the best, la, you know? I just hope that Malaysians as a whole can be sensible and don't go crazy, la, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like, I think I th there was this girl who no, actually wrote in and said that, you know, I'm all for the reopening as I understand that businesses and economy uh, are struggling, but I don't think announcing it over a long weekend is a good idea. Should have just stuck to the 12th of May so that companies can review and plan out a proper SOP and procedure before opening their premises. It's like literally nobody is basically allowed to do anything because it's a weekend, right? Companies are not open. So, <laughs> never mind, we go back to work Monday first and we figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, I think pers personally for me, it's it's a yes and no thing for me. Uh, I think, first of all, when the news first just came out, right? Like, I posted out on Insta story as well. I have like so many people telling me that they don't, they don't agree with it. But there were some on the fans saying that it is, it is understandable. Like Ernest just said, you know, they're just bowing in and caving into economic pressure. Because, you know, we're losing, according to government, 2.4 billion a day. And we've lost, let's just say, a lot of billions, like, okay, in the past 47 days. And that's why we can understand that, yeah, they have one to at least restart the economy because we're already midway through recession really I can tell you that and it will take at least another half a year before the economy sort of restarts even if you lift it up on the 4th of May it will still take at least 2 to 3 months before everything starts adopting back, adapting back to normal and then another 3 months for things to really go back to uh, the, the previous normal life that we are used to but for me it's a yes and no thing yes because uh, while I understand the economic side of things and like, like Ernest said things are tough maybe for us Maybe it's a little bit better because we have savings and all, but for some other people, things are really tough and they really need to get back to earning their income. But no also because for, for many, many couple of reasons, because number one is that what Jane said is also right. We're starting it on a Friday, announcing on a Friday and a Saturday, Sunday for people to prepare does not make any sense because nobody works on a weekend and then you restart on Monday. Now, employers are having problems as well because I know some friends, they're employees who are not willing to go back to work, you know by the way, because they're still so afraid. And statistics-wise, you know, if I'm just looking at it right now, yesterday there were about 105 new cases. And then today, there's another 112 new cases. Mm -hmm. So I'm not... 122 exactly. today. So 122, right, today. So I'm yeah. not surprised at all that this thing will definitely increase when the when the relaxation is lifted on the 4th of May, which is today. And mind you, there is no vaccine yet. I get it. There is no vaccine for COVID-19 yet. It will be at least another maybe a year before people find a vaccine. So, so the argument is also some people are saying that you cannot keep us at home forever because as far as vaccine goes, you, you know, we will die if you keep us another year. But that's only when the vaccine will come out. So it doesn't make sense to keep us forever. I think they're doing this. We don't know the government, right? But at least I have some form of confidence in my government, meaning to say that I believe that they've evaluated certain possibilities and certain factors. And I think the most important deal here is the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Whether the healthcare system can deal with it or not. Simply because in the previous weeks and the previous months, we were having hundreds of new cases every single day, uh, by the way. Yep. And our healthcare system was just completely overwhelmed. 
But now, at least when they announced it, they were only about double digit cases. So that, that from that point of view, we know from a healthcare point of view, number one, we cannot keep this up forever. We cannot keep the MCO forever. Mm-hmm. It will be another year or so before the vaccine comes out. But number two, because there are fewer cases, so it's a manageable number for the healthcare system. And that is why I think based on that, and on top of the economic pressure, they have relaxed the MCO. So to that extent, I can understand. Uh, but however, in my heart, my personal opinion is that I felt that it should have at least gone till the 12th of May to give people some time to prep for this. So so that's that's really where I stand. Yes and no. And the most important thing, you shouldn't have increased, I mean, you shouldn't have lifted it like this, in my opinion. It, it shouldn't be a crash landing on you. It should have been such a softer landing. We know from news reports that have been they've been uh, oh that's a K-drama pun yeah realize. crash landing on um, you I'm like oh, wow yeah, I, I totally don't watch K-drama at all I, I just like oh okay no wonder Jin laughed <laughs> but yeah you know there are red zones there are green zones you know of, of cases like Slayang is considered a red zone they should have do a soft landing approach what I mean is that you cannot just release it entirely like this where everyone can go out it's crazy to think that you know my my Phoebe sent me a picture of Wanyu yesterday. She she didn't go there, lah, but a friend went. And it was already packed. Wanyu was already packed. And this is before the MCL has been lifted. Yeah, this is the weekend. Like, and okay, how, like, but how packed was it? How, how packed was it? Like, how? It was packed. It was packed. Like, there were people roaming around. No regard for social distancing. The word here is social distancing, yeah? So, what Ernest said, you know? Yes, you can, re- yeah. you can, but the place is just packed. You cannot contain the people. That's just absurd to be able to contain that amount of large people. So, two things. Number one is soft landing. They shouldn't have do it so fast like that that means red zones must still be very much controlled maybe green zones yes you can have a certain amount of economic activity mm-hmm. uh, to you know resume some businesses but red zones definitely a no-no because the, the local transmission is still high today is about 70 cases it's more than the foreign transmission that means local transmissions are still very very uh, very very rapid still is still there and number two is that you all the most concerning thing is the mentality of Malaysians I completely agree Ernest the mentality of Malaysia is, let me tell you, right, it's come the 4th of May, right? Even though they say it's a soft landing, uh, they, they like relax, you know, still with a lot of SOPs here to adhere to, still a lot of terms and conditions. Malaysians will take it as if the MCO is completely lifted. Confirm. That's the hardest thing to deal with is the mentality of Malaysians. <sighs> we Malaysians should just go out there and pretend like it's nothing happening already. That's the most concerning part. So how are they going to enforce these SOPs, these terms and conditions? I mean, God bless us all, huh? But I do expect to see a rise and a definite increase in numbers, lah. I mean, um, yeah. yes, just yesterday, uh, itself, uh, there were people already talking about the fact that there were some uncles and aunties celebrating drinking outside at USJ nineteen, and then you know wow. what I mean? It's like yeah, la liao, la liao, la liao, you know, kind of thing. So now, okay, to to I, I read this somewhere. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but so apparently, um, the reserves in our banks, the Bank Negara reserves, are about are at about 104 billion or 140 billion. I can't remember. It's either 104 or 140. Probably 140 billion ringgit. Lah. Okay. And so far, the MCO has caused losses of up to 60 billion ringgit. So technically, our bank reserves are running at an all-time low. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people just saying that, you know, the reason why uh, the, there's this conditional MCO right now is because you know, we want to get the economy back and working up and running again so that the company won't, won't go bankrupt. And for me, is what else do I know, right? Because straight straight after I heard about these things, right, I'll be like, what? Ha-? I Google what happens when a company goes bankrupt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's that started like this freaking long ass paragraph, like, oh, when a company goes, you know, what it goes into its reserves, and I'm like, okay, after I close the window, and you see that kind of represents a general relation. I don't think they understand. Does any do any of you understand? <laughs> Understand what? Like you know, when a company goes bankrupt, a, com- a country goes bankrupt. What happens when a company when a country goes into default? What happens? Yeah, I've never like done any like extensive research on it. So yeah, I, I wouldn't know. So yeah. for as, for me, from my understanding, as long as we have reserves, uh, I cannot remember the latest data, la, Okay, but yeah, I, I just I just I just reserves, said I just said the latest data. The, 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 what like our bank reserves are about. 100 and plus, 100 plus billion, billion, 140 plus billion, okay? And then because of the MCO right now, we have basically incurred losses of over, over 64 billion. So you have about $40 billion left in our country. And we are still in wow. debt. Don't forget, we are in debt with a lot of things. Like for example, you know, there are other uh, bank uh, bonds that we haven't paid off, right? And that's in the trillions. 
So technically, yeah. if you do the math, we are at, we're at a negative right now. But then again, this is just all me just guessing. I don't know for sure. I mean, if any of our listeners or any of our viewers would care to explain you know, what happens, I mean, please feel free. Because for me, it's, I don't want to be. I don't want to claim to be, to be an expert. Because to just to hear the fact that oh, you know what happened when your country when your country is going bankrupt, it kind of scares you a little bit. Because you know, if your country goes, but bankrupt, although you are. Although you may be factually right, what you're staking here is country going bankrupt. Sure, we, we're not economists or anything like that kind. But still, it's regarding economy, loss of jobs, maybe yeah. loss of employment and things like that, right? You're staking that against human lives, right? So when you compare these two, I guess, I don't know. Lah. I mean, when you stake these two against each other, like which is more important? Like, it's it's really, basically right, the trolley dilemma. Lah. Yeah. It's the yeah. trolley dilemma. It's, it's a, du- it's a like, double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like a train, a trolley, a train is going down a track. One side is the economy, one side is the the is the people, and then you you are the one controlling the lever, depending which which the train will go to which direction. So either one will die first. Huh? I feel like <laughs> I the the train. Uh, you imagine I saw a picture someone did uh, an illustration of it. It's like the train goes down the track. It splits in two. One is the economy. One is the rakyat. But at the end of these two splits, right, they combine back. So it's, it's really a loop. Oh man. So basically. Yeah, so you you kill off the raya, the economy dies later. You kill off the economy, the raya dies later. So, oh my so it's a very tough situation. I think I feel it's yeah. very tough for everyone right now. It is. It is very tough. Fair, fair, fair enough. Yeah. Well, what you say makes sense though. What you say makes sense. If the raya dies, the economy there is no raya to power the economy. It's gone. Yeah. If the economy yeah. dies, the raya will also die because there's just not enough economic activity to sustain the raya themselves. So that yeah. that makes absolute sense as well. So so yeah, that's why I say yes and no like It's hard to just completely say that like, yes, I agree with yeah. the lifting of the MCO, because you know in your heart you're thinking about people, you're thinking about your children, your parents, you know your age, your aging, and just your your general neighbor. But at the same yeah. time, you also have to think about yeah la, the, What you call it's, it? What it dilemma? The bleak. trolley. It's, it's re- yeah, the trolley dilemma. It's it's a very bleak situation la, To be honest with you, it's I don't know how yeah. to say. I mean, even ourselves, we, we couldn't even like, uh, you know, determine which is a better decision here. Mm-hmm. How do you the the in charge right now? I'm sure there is so much pressure on them to make these decisions. So, uh, for me, but if you ask me personally, I am for the MCO not to be lifted too early, lah. I mean, I sh- I, th- I still think we should go on the 12th and just hold it out a little bit longer, you know, and so that we are we are slightly more well prepared, lah. Because the announcement on the first or on the 31st, I'm not sure which day was, but it was first, it, it first. was. First, is it? Yeah. It was it was not enough time. There's really not enough time to prepare. Yeah. It it was I think it yeah. was like when they first announced the MCO. Like, you know, it was a day before, right? Yeah. It was a day before. Yeah. It was on the seventh yeah. it was on the sixteenth. Now after that, the seventeenth, everybody had one day to basically prepare everything. And then, you know, a lot of people balik kampong. You see, the thing is, yes, you had one day to prepare everything. All the companies, okay, uh yeah. go back, go there, get your computers, go home and work. Okay, responsible thing mm-hmm. to do. Um, uh, all your machikias, all your auntie uh, and your uncle and your dad and all, hey, go to the grocery store, buy stuff, uh, stock up for a few days. Okay, it's the perfect thing to do. All right, understood. It's the perfect thing to do. Then you have all these people who basically balik kampong. Yay, balik kampong. Yeah, so those are the ones that you are worried about. The ones that don't care. The the people who still goes out jogging, the people who still goes out uh doing whatever they do and, and congregating in different different spaces, despite the the rules being uh enforced. That is probably what I would be most worried about come Monday. Not so much about yeah, the people exactly. going back to yeah. work. Because the people going back to work, they're like, okay, get in my car, go to my office, one sole purpose, I'm going to work. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh you know, exactly uh, what Brandon said, la, it's yeah. the mentality, la. it's yeah. the mentality that right. we are worried about. So yes, like like, like that's why I, I think I think yes, we need this, but I don't know lah. I, I <laughs> do you think uh, after this? I think okay lah. I think this is why I think. I mean, if anyone's watching this Zoom meeting right now, you know, wherever you are, if any audience is watching this, I mean, we use our platform to do the best that we can, or so right. Like I think the three of us can agree that the encouragement and the you know we implore anyone who's listening that although yes, there's a relaxation in MCO. Uh, although, you know, we have a little bit of leeway right now, the truth is that we still must practice the same the same principles, washing your hands, basic things like that, social distancing. I think it is up to us to tell whoever is watching right now and to encourage anyone who's watching that you still must practice this. Although some some eateries might might be able to dine in, you know, and, and you have to provide your contact or whatever, you know, 
Uh, there's no harm tapawing as well, just to avoid that social distancing. There's no harm, you know, standing uh, one meter behind the next person with a trolley in front of you. Yep. We we still must do our response. Um, just must carry our responsibility as as a citizen, lah. You know, as a citizen yeah. to as, and as another right. fellow Malaysian. I think that's just encouragement that we have to give to everyone out there. Don't take this like. Like like you said, the the uncle in USJ, you know, right? Already partying, drinking, <laughs> like oh yeah yeah yeah, you know. I mean, come on lah, yeah. That's the encouragement. I believe, I guess that yeah, yeah I believe it's 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 very up. It's a very personal level. At this point, already, right? Responsibility is at a personal level. You cannot just like right. expect uh like hey, if he do, I also can do ah. Uh. You know, you cannot think like that anymore. Because if you yes. think like that, do then I also can do lor. Then that's that's the worst case scenario. You should not think like that. It should be a yes. very personal. I have my own personal responsibility, yep. not only for myself, my family, and to every other person out there, so that we can contain this virus and so it doesn't get blown out of proportion. Uh, did you did so you see I, did you see that that meme that somebody drew? It's like uh, uh congratulations, Malaysians. It's like now now we basically put you back at the hunger hunger games positions that you fight for yourself. Did you see that meme? Oh, I didn't see that yeah, one. Yeah, not everyone's a man to themselves. Yeah. yeah. So that like whatever you just said, Ernest, it's like. Right now, right, the responsibility is of the our own Malaysians, our own citizens, you know. It's like, yeah, we already told you what not to do. We already told you what's dangerous. We already told you whatever. is whether you do it or not, okay? The ball is in your court right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so what I'm I most scared. Just do it. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. scared of that also, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm most scared. I hate to say yeah. this, you know, but as a fellow yeah. Malaysian, I'm, I'm scared because why it's... I can't believe I'm saying this. It's like, it sounds like I have no faith in my own fellow countrymen like that. But the truth and the God honest truth is I am scared because knowing uh because sound like I'm not a patriot like that, <laughs> but knowing our, our knowing Malaysians, right? Uh, it's just yeah, lah, that's why I guess the, the encouragement is to you guys who are listening to this right now, lah, huh? please lah, okay. You know, elevate our worries a little bit. Please take this seriously, lah. You know, don't go out and pretend like this is this is the end of the MCO. Because the cases are rising as we speak right now, as we as you are hearing this in the comfort of your home or maybe you're outside on your mobile, the cases are still, the coronavirus is still very much there. It's not gone. Yeah. It's still very much there, yeah. and it could really happen to you until it happens to your loved one or someone or yourself. You really don't know how serious this thing is. So yeah, so yeah. so I hate to say this, man, but it's just I'm worried because I just know, um, the mentality of Malaysians out there that they'll just pretend like this is the whole MCO is lifted. Yeah, I kind so of that's, feel. That's I kind of feel there will be some people out there. Not all, not majority. There will be some people out there who will be causing a ruckus, who who will be uh basically like you know doing things they're not supposed to do lah. Like for example, that's and, and that basically causes people like Brandon to think that oh you know that's 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 uh Malaysians in general. But actually no, I would I would say no because like if you look at it right. We have about thirty-four million Malaysians, and out of that, out of all thirty-four Malaysians, right, about three hundred thousand. No, not three hundred thousand. About 20, 30, 30 plus thousand people have been arrested for basically langga the MCO la. So yes, there are yeah. a big number of people who are langgaring the MCO, but of course there are a big number as well, a majority number that is also kind of following the MCO guidelines. But you have that small, I would say that small little bunch that basically wants to go against yeah. the rules. So I don't think we, we but here's the Yeah. But here's the thing that even this small bunch, because we're dealing with with, you know, a virus, you see. Yeah. And of like as, as little as one person and just need one guy. And it, it, it exponentially like spreads, you know? This is like extreme MLM, you know, bro. It's not like one guy catch two, then two catch four. You know? This is like one guy catch 30, 30 catch 900. You know? This is like extreme ML, MLM pyramid scheme yeah. really, you know? Man. And I tell you, I tell you why. Care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell you why I'm worried because I just read on the star, right? In fact, I'm on the star right now. I don't know if you guys noticed this. I was sharing with Jin earlier, even before a Zoom meeting. Uh, yesterday, yes, on Monday, sorry, on May third, yesterday like May third, right, at two eleven in the morning, uh, on Lekas Highway, a mm. police died after a drunk driver crashed into him at a oh, roadblock. Oh yeah, this is oh, this news is damn. Just put that, yeah. This is not even this. This is weekend, yeah. The MCO is technically not lifted yet. This yeah. is just after the first of May, after PM announces that, and, and there are people like Jane said, you know, people are already celebrating, uncles already celebrating, getting drunk, you know, and this guy in Lekas Highway actually killed a police. Uh, police because of the roadblock. So, so that that gives you a sense, you know, when you read news like this, and this is not the only news, there's a second news that came out just yesterday as well. Um, 
This is at Ampang, 4.30 a.m. One is 2, 11 a.m., one is 4.30 a.m. In a space of less than two hours, you know, bro. In a space of about two hours, another drunk driver crashed into a roadblock. Oh, wow. Another one. Two men, some are age 29 and 33. And, and it's, it's just, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know. Like, when you hear news like this, right, then it tells you about the mentality of Malaysians, law. Like, uh, like when There's you no hear reason this, to are go you out drinking and driving. What are they doing? <sighs> yeah, are you surprised? Like, are you are you surprised of this news because you know Malaysians are like this or how? I don't know how you're supposed to react. Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you frustrated? Or are you like oh you know, uh, indifferent towards it? But this is this is real news. One died already. Uh, one two crashed into a roadblock. Maybe they were trying to run away or whatever. Oh yeah. man. So so yeah. So that's that's that's. That's even before the 4th of May. Uh, even before, uh, we haven't even lifted it. Technically, we are still very much, it's illegal to still go Yeah, right as, we, as we are recording this right now, it is the 3rd of May. And, uh, you know, tomorrow is the 4th of May. It's like everybody from Kama, they're like, you know, released from prison. Uh, obviously, there's going to be yeah. a traffic jam tomorrow. I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty Please sure tomorrow, don't. I'm pretty sure, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of Insta stories, right? Insta story themselves in the traffic jam. Oh my God, I missed this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh my god, I've not been in the jam for so long. You know, long. be damn ironic. You know, be damn ironic. People were out in a traffic jam and then they're recording, like, you see, it's so stupid. Why you all come out right now? This is not about going out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sighs> bye, 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 bye. You're in the car. So, you know, like, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I, my gosh, that's such a uh, that that's yeah that, that actually might happen, man. We yeah. better screenshot any of you, please don't don't be so dumb to 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 commit to something like that, man. That'd be so funny, you know. I I just went yeah. to uh, I just went to uh Taipan today to basically get food for my cat because you know my cat food is running out, so essential lah. Uh, of course, no food, cat die. <laughs> and I went to Taipan. Hey, Taipan was full, okay. All the parkings, I would say eighty percent occupied or almost ninety percent occupied. It was going back to as usual where you know there was no jam, but all the parking were basically taken up and I'm like whoa whoa oh whoa God. whoa 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 you know this is like you know going back to normal that kind of thing so did you manage to find parking? no I didn't I double parked <laughs> 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 something which I've not done for quite a while oh my god I can't believe I'm saying this <laughs> did you miss double parking? you're like oh my god I get to double park <laughs> I'm Malaysian. <laughs> <laughs> Should I leave my number? Should I not leave my number? I know Nila. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I said that. Yeah, I double parked because I knew it would only take me two minutes, which took me in a, well, it took me at, at most four because you know they were trying to basically ca- cash in the two two hundred ringgit for cat food, bloody hell, damn expensive. You know, and it took me four minutes, but yeah, oh my god, I double parked. Oh, I'm so ashamed of myself. <laughs> uh, but true, yeah. true Malaysian, true Malaysian. Yeah. I would like to say that, yeah, they, I know there are going to be a small number of people who are going to basically kind of cause a ruckus and get a lot of people riled up. But that doesn't basically stop us, people like us, for example, from educating the public or educating our listeners or basically spreading yeah. the word of, hey man, COVID-19 is not gone, all right? Uh, according, uh, not according yeah. to the words of that. What, what, what the fellow like Kenneth Copeland? Is it Copeland? I'm gonna yeah, yeah, blow, yeah, Copeland. blow it. No, 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 no. He's not. No, <laughs> the, no, no. Wind of God has blown away the COVID nineteen virus. Okay, uh, it's still there. There's no vaccine. All right, it's got a yet amazingly yeah. yeah. No, no, no vaccine yet. Okay, how long are we? Is it gonna take for us to get the vaccine? I don't know. A year at most, maybe eighteen yeah, months. Eighteen months. 18 yeah. Months. Okay. Um. Transmission rate rate of transmission is really really high, okay. A lot yes. of people may appear asymptomatic. Asymptomatic meaning that you know they may carry the virus. They may be a carrier of the virus. They may show no symptoms, no coughing, no nothing. You may think you're fine, but you're a carrier. You can be fine for like four, five days, six days, seven days. But if you go out and you meet with 14, someone, actually. fourteen days, okay, fourteen days. In that fourteen, 14 days, days, if you are a carrier of the virus and you show no symptoms and you meet someone who's got a low immune system, someone who on who is elderly, someone who's got a chronic disease you may have caused someone or you might cause someone their life. But yeah. in, in all honesty, if I, I, I just kinda I just kinda wish that the government would just practice mass testing. Like you got or don't got don't you got or don't have a soul, just freaking test. At least and then uh, by doing that right, you're gonna get like a lot of cases obviously. That's for sure. And yeah. but at least right. you know you are covering more ground and getting more confirmed cases earlier than you know, then basically not knowing anything. That's that's what that's what I personally think, lah. Mm. But true. I I I I don't know. With maybe it's too expensive. <laughs> maybe it costs a lot to basically test people. But ah, 
this fourth of May, um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't broke the news to my team yet, but we are uh, at first, you know, when they mentioned the fir- on the first of May that we go okay, go back to work, all of us were like, okay, cool, um, let's go back to the office on Monday, but we're gonna basically practice a three day work week. That means three days we go back to the office, all right, and two days we work from home. So I think like after looking at the news and looking at the situation and looking at how people are basically reacting to the news of being uh, having the MCO like you know conditionally lifted. Uh, we have basically still decided to have everyone work from home for the whole entire week. And we're going to basically uh, start, uh, we're going to basically work from home until the 12th of May, until something happens. Because, you know, for something to basically be lifted and suddenly going back to work on the first day, right, you got to give it like a week or two weeks to kind of understand what's going to happen, right? Yeah. And, you know, if the yeah. government is, you know, happened to basically curb the number of cases within these two weeks, and if all Malaysians are actually working together to practice social distancing and not basically yeah. have their birthday parties, you know, in their restaurants and whatever not, and not practice social distancing and everything has gone down, then yeah, okay, we, are, we have been wrong. Malaysians know how to basically come together to basically help fight the pandemic because yes, the responsibility, like Ernest said, is in our hands right now. Then only then, uh, when we are fully assured, we will basically go back to the office because if you go into the office now, right, if you're going to go for a meeting with a client, don't tell me, don't tell me you're going to basically, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me you're going to have like a, uh, a meeting, you know, oh, let's go to a pavilion right now on the first floor and basically meet at uh, Roti Boy and meet there. No, you're not. You're just going to say Zoom. No, man. Yeah. Every yeah. client right. is going to say Zoom or yeah. Google Hangouts <coughs> or whatever not. So, it will be still be a, we will still be able to work from home. I mean, that's the best part about it, lah. Working from home, you get to spend time with your family, yeah. and you get to wake up late. You know, you get to basically get ready for your nine a.m. Me- nine a.m. meeting at eight fifty-five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't need to put on pants or so. Yeah, but I, I well, what what are you guys wearing? What are you guys wearing down there? I'm wearing pants. I mean, like short short bermudas, ah. Brandon's probably wearing his boxers, knowing him. <laughs> <laughs> See? I'm not standing up. All I can tell you is I'm not standing up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna stand up. That's it. But okay. Yeah. But even even for Jin, right? I mean, for your for for or even like Ernest's, you know, Ernest like Macham Yes or or JTV Productions, mm. because one of the concessions of this MCO is that you know there's some essential things and some not essential things. And yeah. what I know is that under like Kesenian and Kudayan, film production, video production, <laughs> these are still not allowed. Yep. That's what yeah. I, I read uh-huh. from the excerpt. Yeah, the mm-hmm. summary that we are not allowed to continue. We're not allowed to do filming. We're not allowed to do any any form of video production. Right? So what do you guys think of that? I mean, like, it's it's obvious that I mean, I'm not totally not surprised. We're all in this creative arts industry and in this entertainment industry, but I'm totally not surprised that we are definitely like the last, we will be the last to be released for sure. <laughs> what do you guys think of that? Um, I feel, uh, I don't know. Ernest, what do you think? I I totally understand because uh our line of job requires like a lot of people on set. Yep. Like if you do like, a drama series, it's like thirty people on set, and sometimes you have no idea where have they been, and they don't, the 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 con the to contract the infection, you know, it's the the risk is very high. You see, so for us to be the last to be able to do our jobs, it's totally understandable because I would rather like treasure my life. You know, <laughs> it's like I I'm not gonna like risk myself on purpose. You see, I mean. You you see like in Japan like they have new many new cases even after they second know, wave they, yeah I know that's that's kind of scary you know and considering like I I think Japan Japan only lifted when they were getting zero cases mm-hmm. you see yeah. and suddenly it's just like boom hundred over like in a day and then they're like oh crap like what's going on so for me it's like yeah I'm I'm scared of that happening so for us to be not able to to, to shoot. I'm I'm okay with that. We there's there's right. many other ways that we can continue to do our jobs. Uh, because our, our line of job there's there's three stages as pre production, production and post. So we're trying to focus more on the pre the pre stuff as we're trying to do more of the planning and preparation. Mm-hmm. So if the MPO gets lifted like on the twelfth, you know, and we can get back go back to shooting, then we can just like immediately go and shoot because we've done all the production, the pre production stuff. Yep. Let's just uh, like if it still doesn't get lifted, we still have like a uh, backlog of uh, videos that we have as a uh, post production. Yeah, we can still do that. We can still edit from home. In, in fact, my team is editing from home right now. Wow. So, okay. Uh, we have to adapt, lah. You know, we have to adapt. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, if, if you ask me, 
obviously, uh, Bengamaran film, uh, if you read that, right, they would think that filming, lah, filming, and, and of course, you know, filming requires a lot of, uh, I mean, they're not, I don't think they are as advanced as YouTubers, because YouTubers can feel one person. So they are still in 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 the, oh, yeah. in that la- in that labeling penggambaran film. I think they're still basically referring to the traditional way of filming. And you it, you know just crew alone will be about 30, 40 people. The actors there, this and that. Yeah. And crew alone, yeah. uh, the crew alone are all freelancers, mostly freelancers. You know, like a sound guy could be working for project A, B, C, D, uh, F, G, and you are project H. And this pro this other project that he came from before could be like back to back, back to at different places. So you see, it's a, it's a bit tough to to control lah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I kind of feel that uh, I feel uh, Pengamra film, right? Let's say, for example, if your whole entire company has been quarantined for the past like month and a half at home and they have not shown any symptoms or whatever not, I kind of feel we should be given a leeway. So that's why I think there's a form going around right now. Like if you really want to basically work, you have to declare. You have to basically, uh, it's a form of declaration de- uh, declaring the status of health of your employees. And, and basically, the yeah. MITI, will, MITI will actually give you uh, a permit, uh, approval, either approval or rejection that you can basically continue working. If not, stay at home. For us, is we're gonna be staying at yeah. home because hey, man, all of our projects have been cancelled, <laughs> and you know there's no there's no project that's gonna be ongoing. Now, Dala, they say pengamaran film, uh, is not allowed to be done, right? So you know how the hell we're we gonna feel everything. So right now, I tell you, animators are the best right now. They can basically right. animate. Yeah. Uh, they can animate all 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 of the commercials, all the Raya films. I won't be surprised if like majority of the Raya films are gonna be <laughs> animation. This this Raya. Animated. Yeah. Yeah, and right. you know, who knows? You know, yeah. comic, um, Ernest Ung, bro, fool, everything. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not that simple uh, for me right now, actually. Yeah. But uh, with all being said, um, I know all of us are obviously questioning or against the fact that the MCO just is li- this conditional MCO, you know, the MCO has been lifted just like that. I think right now, there's not so much we can do but to just tell everyone to basically go and read the SOP. All right. Understand what social distancing yeah. is. Be a responsible citizen. It is in your hands right now to help curb this pandemic. Because if you basically bought a tida up attitude, when it's too late, it's too late. I mean, you know how bad it is? It's like one person contracts the virus on day one. By day three, you will not be able to see that person again. It could be that quick. You know? Some yeah. some of these things I read, I mean like, whoa, it just like in a blink of an eye, it, it just happened and boom. How scary yeah. is that? I, I cannot. Sometimes I get very, I get anxiety attacks, you know, understanding how quick you can lose someone. And that's really, really scary. Yeah. Right. So it's like, basically like, you know, you guys don't like, I mean, this is to everyone watching, like, you guys don't like, right? If someone from MLM come approach you, right? Like, you know, you come for all these MLM talks and these are nonsense or pyramid schemes. The coronavirus is an extreme MLM pyramid <laughs> scheme. You want to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, MLM on steroids, man. <laughs> this is MLM on steroids. You really don't like people coming to approach you for MLM, right? Uh, so you want to avoid them, then avoid this coronavirus as an extreme MLM person on steroids. At all costs, you want to not come in contact with any of them. And the only way to do so is like this social distancing. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I guess that's the only takeaway that we should take away from this episode. <sighs> I would say a lot, even though Good Luck Malaysia was trending yesterday on Twitter I like to say hey man let's do this together okay yes. yeah. yeah you will hear people like us continuously nagging you like old grandpas and uncles but hey man we're here to basically try and see through this whole entire process and make sure that everything goes away so that we all can get back to our normal lives trust me it's right. not going to be normal for a while but it is only temporary. So before we go, Ernest, would you like to say anything? Stay home, wash your hand, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. Do the, do the right thing, lad. Do the right thing, do the right thing. Yeah, Brandon, anything you'd like to say before we go? Yes, be responsible, be accountable. Uh, yeah, avoid this, like the extreme MLM on steroids guy. <sighs> I would like to say... Be with your loved ones. Think uh, of your loved ones. Uh, if there's one thing this MCO has basically taught me is to basically treasure your loved ones and basically understand them a lot more. There are a lot of things, a lot of things that you can basically learn about your mom, your dad, your wife, your kid when you just sit down and just understand them. And it's really, really amazing. Uh, I remember when they say that you know MCO is lifted. I go back to work, right? The first thing me and my wife was saying that oh we're gonna miss our daughter. <laughs> you know, we're gonna miss. I'm gonna miss my mom. 
But anyways, Malaysians, please stay safe, okay? 4th of May is the first day where the MCL is conditionally lifted. We can do this. See you next time.